In this video tutorial, I'll show you how to create an App Genie application in just a few minutes. We'll begin by designing a simple app for managing inventory. Then we'll upload it to the internet, set it up, and add some data. After that, we'll make a small change to the app and redeploy it. This will give you a clear understanding of the full workflow when using App Genie. Inventory management usually involves tracking products, stock received, stock withdrawn, and current stock levels. We'll create a basic application to handle these elements. A full inventory system would include more features, but we'll keep it simple for this demonstration. Let's start by creating a new project in App Genie. We'll name it Inventory Management. Next, we'll add a table to the project and name it Products. I prefer to start by creating tables, then adding fields so I can get a better picture of the app structure. But you can also add fields first if that works better for you. Now, let's add the other tables we'll need. We'll add a table called Stock Received, where we'll record incoming stock, and another one called Stock Withdrawn for items taken out of inventory. Now we'll define the fields for our tables. For the Products table, we'll add the following fields. Product Name, Description, SKU, which stands for Stock Keeping Unit and uniquely identifies each product. Stock level. Let's assign data types to each field. Product name will use a varchar of 100 characters. Description will use a text field. SKU will use a varchar of 50 characters and will be set as the primary key. Each table in App Genie must have a primary key that uniquely identifies each record. This is usually an auto-incrementing integer field, but it can also be a custom field like the SKU, as long as it's unique. For the stock level field, we'll use an integer since it stores numbers. Later, we'll make it a calculated field based on incoming and outgoing stock. For the stock receive table, we'll add these fields. SKU. Quantity received. Date received. Received by. We'll link the product SKU field to the SKU in the products table using a lookup field. Make sure to set this field as required so users can't leave it blank. Quantity received will be an integer and also required. We'll mark it as in sign to prevent negative values, since you can't receive a negative quantity. For date received, we'll use a date time field and set it as required. Received by will use a varchar of 100 characters. We'll set it to automatically capture the name of the user who created the record. To do that, we'll select created by username from the auto value dropdown. This helps reduce errors and keeps data consistent. As mentioned earlier, every table must have a primary key. The easiest way to add one is by creating a field named ID. App Genie will automatically set it as an integer auto-incrementing primary key. Now, let's handle the stock withdrawn table. Since it's similar to the stock received table, instead of creating everything from scratch, we'll delete the current table and duplicate the stock received table.
Then we'll rename it to stock withdrawn and update a few field names. Change quantity received to quantity withdrawn. Change date received to date withdrawn. Change received by to withdrawn by. The rest of the fields and their settings stay the same. Now let's configure the stock level field in the products table to be calculated. It should show the sum of quantities received minus the quantities withdrawn for each product. To do this, go to the stock level field and mark it as read only. This lets us use a formula. Then enable the calculated field option. In the query box, we'll enter a SQL formula that calculates stock level by summing up the quantity received and subtracting the quantity withdrawn for the current SKU. This formula uses SQL, which might seem complex at first, but don't worry, AppGenie provides many examples in the documentation. You can also ask for help in the AppGenie forums or use a tool like ChatGPT to help you write SQL formulas. There's even a video showing how to do that. With the tables and fields now in place, let's generate our app. Click the Generate App button. App Genie will ask you to choose a folder to save the application. Since this is our first time generating the app, I'll type in D colon slash inventory management. If the folder doesn't exist, App Genie will create it. Click Continue to begin generating. Once done, click View Files to open the folder where the app was saved. The next step is to upload the app to our web server. AppGenie includes a built-in uploader for easy deployment, but we'll need to configure it first. There are two quick steps. First, click the app name in the top left corner. In the application URL field, enter your website address. Include any subfolder if the app is not in the root directory. Second, use an FTP client to upload a file called fileuploader.php to your server in the folder where the app will live. I'll use FileZilla, but you can use any FTP client you prefer. If you don't know your server's FTP details, you can find them in your hosting control panel or ask your hosting provider. Once uploaded, return to AppGenie and click the Upload button. AppGenie will check that the server is reachable and the file is in the right place. If everything checks out, the app will begin uploading. This may take a few minutes depending on your internet speed and app size. You can monitor progress in the Uploader window. When the upload completes, click Launch Uploaded App to open the app in your browser. Since this is the first time opening it, you'll be taken to the setup page. Solve the CAPTCHA first.
Then continue to the setup screen, where you'll need to enter your database connection details. Enter the database server address, database name, username, and password. These can usually be found in your hosting control panel. Once connected, you'll be asked to create an administrator account. This user has full access and can manage other users and settings. I'll enter admin as the username, along with an email and a strong password. After setup, you'll be logged in automatically as the admin. You can now start using the app to manage your inventory. The homepage shows links to the tables available to the current user. As the admin, you can see all tables. Other users will only see the ones they have access to. Let's add a couple of products. Click the products link, then click add new. Enter the product name as laptop, a short description like a powerful laptop, and the SKU as LAP001. Stock level is read only and will update automatically. Let's add another product, smartphone, with an SKU of PHN1. If you have a list of products in a CSV file, you can import them by clicking the Import CSV button. It's a fast way to bulk add items. Now let's add a stock received entry for the laptop. Back in the products table, open the laptop record to view its details. You'll see two tabs, one for stock received and one for stock withdrawn. Under the Stock Received tab, click Add New. Enter quantity received as 10 and set the date to today. The Received by field is filled in automatically. Save the record. The Product SKU is also filled in automatically you'll see that the stock level for the laptop is now updated to 10. Next, let's add a stock withdrawal for the same laptop. Go to the Stock Withdrawn tab, click Add New, and enter quantity withdrawn as 2. Set the date to today. The withdrawn by field is auto-filled. Save the record. The stock level now shows 8, which reflects the 10 received minus 2 withdrawn. Before we finish, let me show you how easy it is to update the application in App Genie. Suppose we want to apply a dark theme and add a photo field to the products table. To change the theme, click Edit Theme, choose a dark option, then click Apply. To add a product photo field, open the products table and click New Field. Name the field Photo. App Genie will automatically configure it as an image upload field. On mobile devices, Users can take photos directly from their camera and upload them.
Now, let's generate the app again. App Genie will use the same output folder. Confirm that you want to overwrite the existing files. Click OK to continue. Once it's generated, click Upload again to send the updated app to the server. App Genie will only upload the new or modified files, so this will be much quicker than the first time. Once the upload finishes, refresh the browser page. You'll now see the dark theme applied and the new photo field added to the products table. You can upload images for each product directly. That's it. In just a few minutes, we've built an inventory management app using App Genie and learned how easy it is to update and redeploy it. We've only touched on a few features. There's a lot more you can explore. Check out the other tutorials and the documentation on our website to dive deeper. If you have questions or need help, visit the App Genie forums or reach out to support through our website. Thanks for watching, and I hope App Genie helps you build custom apps quickly and easily.